Hello, viewers of OBN Horn of Africa. Today, I have one guest. My guest is uh, Mr. Kuabena Hene Hankang from Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, welcome, Mr. Kuabena. Thank you. Thank you very much. How are you? <laughs> and it is really my pleasure to host you again. Yeah. And let us uh, discuss on the current issue in Ethiopia and in Africa as well. And uh, as you know, Ethiopian Prime Minister Dr. Abiy Ahmed has been leading the National Army from the front line as a battlefield to fight against the terrorist TPLF and it is allied internal and external allied forces. And uh, what can you say about this? You know what? I heard that in the news and I was very glad I did because that is actually part of our history. You know, it is important that we study our history. Now, I'm going to be saying this a lot. If you know your history, then you know where you started and you can always move forward from there and know where you're heading. In our life, life history, in terms of our monarchs and our kings, even in the Bible, you find all these people leading even in their so-called Alexander the Great, the kings and the commander-in-chiefs are in charge and they lead the fight. It's not only for show, but it's a motivation. And you find the generals all doing this and being more motivated, have the incentive to be part of the whole Ethiopian fight and the African fight at large. So it is very laudable that he did that. And I'm not surprised because he's a soldier, soldier, you know. He has a history of fighting himself. So I guess that's what is kicking him to get back and fall in line to do what he's doing. It's really, really um, a great move he's done over there. And when uh, he joined the National Army on the front line, the prime minister called up on uh, Ethiopians and Ethiopian dissenters uh, to join him to fight against the, the terrorists. There you go. And not only the terrorist TPLF, but also neo-colonialism, Western global power pressure. And as a result of uh, Premier's call, many Ethiopians have already joined them and uh, joined the prime minister and they are fighting from the front line. And how did you also get these? Very effective yeah. across the globe, you know, in the UK, in the Netherlands, in Germany, in South Africa, everywhere in boston washington dc they are really causing trouble making everybody know that you don't have to mess with ethiopia if you mess with ethiopia you mess with africa you know so and it's all because of how and i'm even told that he's getting all this help from abroad people are chipping in every um, dollar they get to help him fight this fight so it is a great move everywhere people are excited that the commander-in-chief himself is in the front line fighting this fight. I am very proud of him, you know, very, very proud of him. He should keep it up. You have his number, you tell him, I say he should keep it up. <laughs> Do you think that all African, uh, all African countries are equally participating in fighting against, especially fighting neocolonialism and Western global powers of pressure? Well, that should have been the case, but I'm afraid not. That is not what is happening. You know, most African leaders, African countries are aloof. They are living their nationalistic, individualistic, nation building countries, and that is not taking us anywhere. Just look around you. The Europeans have European Union, right? You look around to the north, the Americas, United States of America. Last I said it the other day, 50 countries put together. You turn to the Arab leagues, you have the Emirates. They've also come together. The only way even Ethiopia became Ethiopia was when it was a unified Ethiopia, you know, from the north, the south, the east. We got decimated, the rest of Africa got separated into all these individual, individual countries as a result of their meeting at the Berlin Conference. And thereafter, we have never come together since. So, this whole individual countries trying to do their best and use their own resources to fight the fight is not going to take us anywhere. 
So I don't think they are doing it right. They stopped it in a truck in 1963 when Nkrumah had their last attempt at the Addis Ababa conference, right in your city. You know, we cannot pretend we can do this by one country. That is why all nations in Africa needs to get to the pro get with the program and help fight this continental fight. No one country can do this. You know, and we have an example with what Ethiopia did. You know, the Adowa fight that took place. What even Hesalasi put together, even your latest president, prime minister, you know, his winning the Nobel Prize was because of the unification that he brought together. Unity, unity, unity. And Kuma said, unite or perish. That's just a fact of life. If we don't unite, we have nowhere else to go. So if all the African countries were together, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Why are we having all these headaches of them not allowing us to unite? And now it's from within. So no, I don't, I don't think the rest of the countries are in on the program, but we're gonna make them. We're gonna make them and call them out, those that are no longer interested. And then those that like the fight will keep fighting until they join us. So yes, it has to be a unified front together as a continent. Otherwise there's no winning game here. What is uh, holding them back? Here's what is happening. You know what? I told you the other day, there are two classes of leaders in Africa. There's the ones that went to study abroad with a European and a white man. When they came back, the real definition and one of our pharaohs in Ghana said something. He said, uh, education and elitism is when you come back to help liberate your people. They came back and they are the ones looting us. So the reason they are not interested is because of their pocket. What else can I explain this? How are you gonna have entire continents, the richest real estate on planet Earth? Everybody is going there to pick up stuff and run with it. And you say, you don't wanna to get together. It doesn't make any sense. So because they are filling their pockets, satisfying their families and their cronies, they are not interested in the fight. So we need to get them out of the window, as my friend will say, not the door, get them out of the window, move new leadership in front, and then begin to take the real action in the interest of the continent. They are just satisfying their pockets. That's all the explanation is, this, is, is about. Nothing else can do this, can explain this, I'm telling you. And how, how should it be solved? Uh, how long should it continue in this way? We can't do this forever. We don't have the whole day at our hands, you know. So basically, it's just two things. What is going on now is, my brother, we have done this fight, had this fight for, let's say, the last 60 years, since the last time we attempted it, right? 63. They said, okay, let's not do it. Let's go slowly. So that's what we did. Now, we all know it did not work. Now, there has been so much movement, so many movements, so, so much talking by great guys out there speaking on behalf of the continent. We have Pierre Lumumba. We have Dr. Arikana. We have Professor James Smalls. These people have been speaking for over 50 years. They've trained a lot of people, but there's so many factions, individual Pan-Africanist movements all over. We need to have one platform. One platform is what I'm pleading. And I'm gonna take advantage of your platform today and announce that we need to have one platform so that we can all agree that this is how we're going to reverse the Berlin Conference's agenda. Because guess what? For them to make us what we are now, they have one agenda. Nobody talks about the people that were at the conference. All we remember is there was a conference, and at that conference, they agreed to divide Africa into pieces. And that's what they did. For us to change that, we need to get together and then reverse the situation. If we have all these Pan-African movements all over the place, not good. So you see, I told you the other day, ACUP, African Continental Unity Party, is what we need to, just come take a look at the, at the, at the, at the ideology. It's very basic and simple, very accommodating, encompassing everything, one power global base, training leaders through our academy. We have to have one political front. The media, we all need to be one front so we can deal with this. Fragmented as we are, we cannot win this fight. So we have to develop one platform, put it all together synergistically so that we can have a cohesive 
you know, ideology and then face this once and for all. We cannot fail this time. You know, we have to get together as one union party. That's why we cannot let Ethiopia go down because that's the last horn of Africa. We just can't do it. So tell your PM that I say kudos to him. He should still lead the fight. We are all with him. We're going to get in the streets and fight with him. And there's a PM, Prime Minister Dr. Abiy Ahmed uh, has a big ambition to realize the rebirth of Pan-Africanism. And uh, my question is, how should Africans do to succeed this African agenda? We first have to make sure we need to, the other day, remember I told you, we need to identify ourselves, know who we are. Because the only reason we are not winning at this is because we are trying to become like them, you know? So in our bid to become like them, then we have no fighting chance because that is a losing battle. Everything they have done and developed to date is destroying the planet. Cell phones, radiation, all the things they've done, aeroplanes. They did all these things and it's destroying us. We need to change the game plan. So first of all, we need to get together, get one major platform that will all agree to be there, share our leverages so that we can take advantage of what somebody is not good at and build one unifying front. Now, once we get that, we're going to have one major ideology to face us so that we will use that as our basis, as our foundation to start off from a new frontier. Because as things are going right now, trust me, it's not going to work. We are too divided. So we have to unite or we perish. That's all I'll say on that. We have to unite. There's no um, qualms about it. There's no, um, it's non-negotiable is what I'll say. You know, we have to unite or we perish. It's that simple. Some people say media is a magic bullet and uh, what role should the African media play to defend their country from pressure, pressures like from uh, Western and global powers? Oh yeah, the media is a huge factor. It's a huge factor. You remember the guy called Marcus Gavi? He was able to mobilize 50 million people without a, a news broadcast or television or even what they call telephones and internet. Kwame Kuma did equally the same. Now we have the internet. And with the internet, before you need to go and see a publisher to write a book. Now you can write a book in your basement and publish it in two days. So this is our time. The internet, according to Farrakhan, was a gift to the black man. So we have to take advantage of the media space that we have. Look at you today, you guys. You are in your little corner, but you are brokers everywhere, you know? So we cannot underestimate media houses like yours. The CNN and the MSNBCs, their days are over because we know they've been bought and they belong to them. So we cannot underestimate media houses like OBN where things are gonna be real. We have our own narrative that we can tell it and then we will not make sure anybody comes in to change the, the, the narration for us and give us some wrong information that doesn't belong here. You know, like they were doing to Ethiopia. They said that this Ababa is under siege, 800 kilometers. It's been almost a month. They are not still there. You know, what kind of life is this? So that's what I'm talking about. But with you, we got the real information, truth on the ground, and that's what we are running with. So media houses, get all of them together. You need to get all your media houses in sync so that you can connect and communicate appropriately. In the past, we had people like Marcus Gave, you mentioned the Kwame Nkrumah. Do you think that we do have people like them today, part of a strong Pan-Africanity who liberated Africa from the colonialists? So here's the, here's the problem. It's, it's a catch-22. We used to have individuals, Kawundas, Nyerere's, you know, Gavi, Malcolm X, we had them as individual at the helms of affairs, and that was the mistake we did. I wouldn't say mistake, that was what we had at the time, you know, and guess what happened? They took them out one by one by one. They took them all out because it was charismatic leaders in charge. Guess what? Now there's a new chef in town, African Continental Unity Party. There's no individual person running nothing. The vision is the leader. We are all chasing after the leader to develop one African global power base. So if they take me out, it's still running. If they take you out, it's still running. It's the vision. 
and everybody in here, like I'm just a communicator for ACUP. I'm no president. There's no president in here. We are running the agenda. So your question you ask, there are people here now doing the same thing, but we are going around it in a different way, not being a target so that they can take us out one at a time. So before they realize it is going to be like a tsunami, we're going to take them by surprise. You remember the Arab Spring? Mm. That's exactly how this is going to be, because it's going to be age of internet, intellectualism, speaking. We're not going to take no gun, but we'll speak sense to our people. They will rise up and face them and kick them out of our places. That's how we're going to do it. So that's the new Jomo Kenyatta. The new in coma is, is all chasing the leader, the vision as the leader. That's what is the new form. No more individual running the show. That's why I think all our Dr. Arikana, Dr. PLOs, uh, Joshua Maponga, all these great speakers out there, should all coalesce under one umbrella and then we all speak to a vision of one united African power base. That's what we're looking for. And it will work better than the other, the other uh, style around, the, the other way, the, the way we did it the other time. Yeah, it'll be much better this time if we run it with a vision center. Let me also add this question, uh, Mr. Kobena. What role should African leaders and a youth play to strengthen Pan-Africanism? So you know what? The African leaders today, there are 50 countries in Africa, right? 55. Yeah, the Americans are 50, we are 55. That means there are 55 leaders in every individual country. But you see what is happening in Ethiopia. What is the communique that AU sent out? Not efficient, not significant. It won't do nothing because they are being funded by the same person giving them bullets and guns to shoot in the street. That's why it's not working. So the way the leaders have to behave because they have a hidden agenda of filling their pockets, they are not saying nothing. They are busy running their country as if that will help, but they won't, you know? So these leaders are nothing we can depend on. We need a new style of leadership that are Afrocentric, continentally approached, doing things according to how it's supposed to be for the entire continent so that we take charge of our resources once and for all. No more having the resources. And can you believe across the board, most of our resources, we get 10, eight to 10%, the best maybe 12% and the rest goes away. That's not good. We cannot win with that, with, with that um, equation. So we have to change the style. The leadership has failed. They need to get out of the way and get new leadership or get with the program of Pan-Africanism, which was in the 50s, and then take it to the new frontier, and that is what is gonna win. So leaders, no, we can't rely on them anymore. Their days are over. They have failed, drastically too. <laughs> yeah. The youth, here's what the youth need to do. I need to say this. The youth today are not studying. My brother, the key to this is knowing your history. I quoted Professor Smalls the other day. I can paraphrase it again. Know your history. It is um, PM knowing his history. That's why he realized if he goes to the front line, it will be a better option. We have in our history that we chase the Italians out of Ethiopia. It's there. Everybody knows it. So we have a record. We also have in our history that they are not good people. They came to invade us. That is there. When you know your history so much, you'll be able to tell the loopholes even in the Bible and realize the history don't jive, you don't match, you know? So there's so much to study in your history so you can erase the white man's mystery. And if you erase it, then we can go about our black magic. It's as simple as that. It's not complicated. So the youth needs to study, study their history. Once they get that intact, you realize they're gonna be pumped up and take their country and their continent at large. Finally, if you have a message to all African people. Oh yeah, you know, the other day I was telling you the new frontier of energy is in solar. So solar is all we've got. Now, where is the most solar? Right on the continent. So if we have all these people running over there and we don't unite, they took the oils and they took all the energy sources and that's what is going on now. We need to take charge of our solar so that when we unite and they come, we are the ones that are gonna run that thing. 
In addition to that, I also want to make sure that our frontier of getting one major platform is taken seriously because we cannot run as diverse and as fragmented as we are. So we want to make sure that we are united, get up, up our, our, our act together in terms of our politics, our economics, our cultural practices, our traditions. We merge under one umbrella, make sure our economy is all decided under the Afrocentric way. Once we have this in our major platform, then we can be able to formulate agenda and ideologies that will match and pair us up and make us be able to face um, the enemy as we want it. So my only thing is we got to make sure we study our history. That is very, very paramount. If we don't know what happened 3,000 years ago, even 400 years ago, how would we know where we made mistakes? So we have to learn our history because the history will put us in the right perspective and show us that, yes, we are the ones that were supposed to be running the show and we got interrupted big time. And that's why we are where we are. And we're not going to let that continue anymore. So all I'll say is we got to learn our history so we can erase the mystery and go about our black magic. And that should be it. Mr. Kwabena Hene, strong Pan-Africanist and analyst, thank you very much for your time. And we appreciate. Appreciate. Thank you very much. You're doing a great job, guys. Keep it up. We need the media houses like you, okay? <laughs> The viewers of Obian Horn of Africa. Today we have discussed with Mr. Kwabena Hena on current issue in Ethiopia, and this is all about this edition. Till next edition, goodbye.